So, dear brothers in Christ, <clears throat> greetings to you all. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, today, uh, as we have studied uh, so many classes, uh, uh, today we will study one important thing about the uh, uh, book of Genesis. Uh, the book of Genesis, uh, you see, uh, it is mentioned that uh, a river came out of uh, Garden of Eden. Okay? And as it came out of Garden of Eden, it says that it uh, was divided into four parts. So let us see today. So what is this uh, river that came out of Eden? And what is the meaning of it uh, getting uh, into four parts? Let us read uh, Genesis 2.10, brother. Genesis 2.10. And a river went out of Eden to wa water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Yes. So it says, it came out of Eden, and after coming out of Eden, it was parted into four parts. So, dear brethren, what is this uh, four parts? Uh, what is the name of each river? So, let us continue to read uh, Genesis uh, 2, 11 to 12. Brother. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which com compasseth the whole land of Hevilal, where there is gold. Mm. See, the first river it says that it is called as Pishon and uh, it covers the whole land of Avila and there is much gold, it seems. And then continue. What is the, How is the quality of gold there? Uh, and the gold of that land is good. There is a bedlam and the oxen stone. Okay. So, the gold is very good, it seems, sir. So why this uh, matter is given there that it went to a land of Havila, gold is there? Huh? And let us read about the second river. You see, that second river is given to us in, uh, you see, Genesis uh, uh, 2.13. Uh. And the name and the <clears throat> and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. It compares the whole land of uh, Ethiopia. So, second river, the name of the second river is called as Gihon. You see? So, the second river, Gihon, it goes to land of Ethiopia, it seems. Which is the third river? Genesis 2, 14, brother. Huh? And the name of the third river is Hidikil, that is it with goeth toward, toward the east of Assyrian and the Fourth river is Euphrates. Very good. So, name of the third river is Hidikil. It goes towards Assyria. And the fourth river, it says, it is river Euphrates. But doesn't mention that in which way and which direction it is going. So, what are these, uh, you see, four uh, divisions of one river that came out of uh, Eden. So, it says, it came out of Eden and parted into how many parts you see here then, he parted into four parts. Uh, now, why this uh, uh, information is given to us in the Bible? How does it uh, help us? What is the meaning of this one? You say, what is the meaning of uh, water in the Bible? In the Bible, water has got uh, different meanings. Uh, but in book of Genesis, in this second chapter, the river, you see, here signifies the people. You see, the multitude, the nation, the tongues. You see, let us read uh, <coughs> Revelation 7.15, 17, Revelation 17.15. <clears throat> and he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whole world sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Ah, you see, the verse clearly says, that the waters which thou sawest are people. So here, when it says that the river came out of Eden, you see, it means the people actually came out of Eden. Through whom? If you see, we all know very well that uh, God created Adam, you see, in his own image. And it is through Adam that the entire generation of mankind uh, are today are come into existence. How? When he came out of Eden, you see, the multitude, mass of people, the population of this world increased. And we all know that we are all uh, the father of, uh, you see, we are all have one father, that is our father Adam. 
once adam committed sin what did god do god uh, cast them out of garden of eden you see so the river came out of eden god says now in genesis 3:17 Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Why? Because thou did not heed to my words. So, when God sent Adam out of Eden, he was cursed and he was supposed to, you see, work very hard and eat by the sweat of his bro. So, we all have come through that one person, Adam. We have studied this one in our beginning class, the ransom class. You see, all mankind are... Of one blood, you see, we are all blood relatives. How in Adam? Let us read, brother. Genesis, uh, Acts, seventeen twenty-six, brother. And hath made of one blood all, all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Very good. See. We are all made of one blood. All the nations of this uh, men, you see, be anybody, we are all relatives. Is, uh, you see, we all have come out of Adam. How? When Adam came out of uh, Garden of Eden, you see, through him the entire mankind uh, you see, existed. So this uh, signifies the people, you see, through Adam, who came out of uh, Garden of Eden. So, now what is the meaning of uh, it parted into four divisions? You see, we all know that very well. The four divisions which God is selecting among the world, you see, is the four types of people. That is, uh, we all know that there are two salvation, the heavenly and the earthly salvation. In the heavenly salvation, there are two parts. Uh, and the earthly salvation, there are two parts. The heavenly salvation, two parts. Can anybody tell me which are the two parts in heavenly salvation? Great multitudes and one lakh forty-four thousand. Very good. Now, which is the two parts in earthly salvation? Ancient worthies and world. Very good, Buddha. So, here, the four rivers that came out of Eden signifies the same four. You see, salvations which mankind is having through Adam. Therefore, you see, God promised the same thing to, you see, Abraham. He said, no, huh? I have sown upon myself and say that uh, in thy seed all the nations of this earth shall be blessed. They shall be, you see, blessed how? You see, I'll make the seed as the stars of the heaven and sand of the seashore. That means the two types of salvation, heavenly and earthly salvation. So through Jesus, there are actually two salvations. You see, many Christians... Uh, you see, have the false belief that there is only one salvation, that is earthly, the heavenly salvation, and there is no earthly salvation at all. But uh, Bible says, uh, you see, Jesus died for everybody. And uh, because of his death, there are two salvations. Those who believe Jesus now, they go to the heavenly salvation. But what about the people who don't believe Jesus now? They will all come to the earthly salvation. So let us read First Timothy 4.10, brother. And uh, First John two two, uh, home brother, can you read? Is it possible? Uh, home brother, can you read? Is it possible? Okay, Gopal brother, please read. Brother. Uh, yes, First, uh, read, read, home brother, read. Ah, uh, read, brother. First Timothy 4 10. Or he puts because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of especially of those that believe. You see, 
So this verse uh, clearly says that Jesus is the savior of all men. Everybody, though you believe or not, Jesus is the savior. But he is a special savior of whom? Those who believe now. Those who believe now in the gospel age, Jesus is giving them a special salvation. Therefore, you see, in uh, the promise which God made to Abraham, see, heavenly salvation, there are two parts. Like in 44,000, the great multitude. And in the earthly salvation, there are two parts, the ancient worthies and the world. See, the first river, you see? What is the first river? It is called as Pishon. And where did it go? It says, it went into the land of Avila. And what was there in the uh, land of Avila? What was there with her? Gold. Very good. Gold. What is the meaning of this one? The first river, you see, went to the land of Avila where there was gold. What is the meaning of gold in the Bible? Correct, no? Huh? For the Bible, which is the dictionary? Huh? Bible is the... Yes. So, any questions we have? We need to search the answers from where? From the Bible. Very good. So, what is the meaning of gold in the Bible? Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of gold in the Bible? I'll give you a clue. See, we studied that one in the tabernacle class. Huh? Correct, no? Tell Divine me. Divine nature. Very good. Divine. Yes, correct. Divine nature. See, in the tabernacle, there were two types of metal shoes. The holy and the most holy was the you see, made up of uh, the gold, while uh, the things in the court were made up of uh, copper and brass. So what does this signify? If you see, this signifies the two nature. You see, the gold signifies the divine nature, while the copper, which is much resemblance uh, to uh, you know, gold, signifies the human nature. So gold, always in the Bible, signifies the divine nature. You know, tell me, which is the uh, class of people among these four which goes to the divine nature? Is it the world? Is it the ancient worthies? Is it the great multitude? Or is it uh, one lakh forty four thousand? Who are the people who go to the divine nature? Tell me. One lakh forty four thousand. Very good. Uh, so, this is what they signified here. Uh, you see? The one lakh forty four thousand who achieved the first gold prize. Uh, you see, so this uh, represents uh, the lakh and forty four thousand of them. So, from when did this uh, selection start? If you see, it started after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the first advent. Uh, when he began to preach, you see, he preached about the heavenly salvation. So, before Jesus came into this earth. This door for the heavenly salvation was not open at all. We read now in the Hebrews 2 3. You see, this heavenly salvation is called as a so great salvation. Okay. And in Hebrews 3 1, it says, This heavenly salvation was first began to be preached by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, and uh, it is uh, uh, the particles of heavenly salvation, heavenly calling. So, this heavenly calling came only after the first advent of Jesus. Then, how come all the people before Jesus can go to heaven? No. Therefore, Jesus said, nobody has ascended to heaven. You see, how many people have gone to heaven before uh, uh, Jesus' first advent? Huh? Has uh, have anybody gone to heaven till uh, uh, Jesus' second advent? Huh? No. No. Jesus clearly says, see, read uh, John 3.13, brother. John 3.13, can somebody read, brother? Home, brother, or Gopal, brother, can you read? And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which and, is in heaven. See, no man has ascended to heaven. Nobody, nobody has gone to heaven at all. Why? All that are in the graves, are waiting in their graves. The Bible clearly says that even David, you see, one of the faithful persons in the Old Testament, he also did not go to heaven. You see, read Acts 2.34. Acts 2.34 and Acts 13.36. Mm. For David is not ascended into the, into the heavens, but he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, 
sit thou on my right hand. See, David is not ascended to heaven. Then, brother, Acts 13, 36, brother. For David, after he had served his own generations by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Oh, he sleep. He's sleeping to be raised only at the second event when the worldly salvation comes. And it is the time that uh, these people will be resurrected. Dear brethren, so the Bible clearly says that uh, all are in the grave. All are sleeping nicely in the grave. Jesus clearly said in uh, John 5.28, you see, marvel not at this, the hour is coming, eh? in that which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. So where are everybody? Everybody in the grave, so they are listening to, you see, and nothing. He will only listen the Lord's second advent, you see, when he will call, they will come out. You see, in Isaiah 57, 2 also it says, no, everybody are resting in their own beds. You see, God has put a bed for everybody in the grave. Everybody are lying, uh, waiting till their appointment time comes for the resurrection, dear brethren. So, you tell me, now what is the qualification to be of the 1,44,000? What should be there and how should we be to achieve that the divine nature? What is the main target, main finishing line uh, we need to touch to win the prize, brother? Home brother, Gopal brother, can you answer? Called, chosen, and faithful. Correct. Good. Very good. Called, chosen, and faithful. That means we need to be of the faithful class to win the crown. Good. Home brother, how should we be? We should be like whom to win the prize? Tell me. Home brother, you're there? We should be like whom to win the prize? Okay, uh, Gopal brother, can you answer? Likeness of Christ. Yes, the Xerox copies of Jesus. This is our aim. This is our target. You see, just by believing in Jesus, we shall be saved. That is the first step. But we need to work out our salvation. That is a major step which many people don't take at all, dear brother. We need to take the both step. What the step? The step of consecrating ourselves to the Lord. The step of offering our bodies as a living sacrifice to be the copies of Jesus. How do we be the copies of Jesus? But exactly the way Jesus lived on this earth. You see, so Jesus lived exactly perfect on this earth, but our perfection should be in the heart of the other end. This is what God is saying. So, if we are perfect in our heart, God will test us severely. Why? Because God is giving us a gold price, first price. Then should we be tested or not? Huh? Should we be tested before God giving the price or not? Yes, we should be tested. Without God testing us, you see, God cannot give this price to your You see, in the world, any exam you take, you see, any work or anything you take without testing anything, you see, without proving anything, you see, there will be no reward at all. Even gold, you see, gold, if somebody comes and gives a raw gold, nobody will take it. You see, because that gold has to be purified. Similarly, God purifies us everything and every day to be like Christ. First Peter 1 7, brother. First Peter 1 7. But the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold than perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. See, the trial of your faith being more than precious of the gold. You see, so our faith should be more than gold is tested. So this is the first lesson, okay? Now, the second river. Now, what is the name of the second river? What is the name of the second river, brother? Gihon. Very good. Gihon. Genesis 2.13. It says, it goes to the land of Ethiopia. 
no what is ethiopia huh? we need to check uh, the world map you see you know where does ethiopia come huh? ethiopia means it is in africa now you tell me uh, have we ever studied about africa in our classes yes we have studied about africans in our huh? beginning classes remember three world no i had how many sons three very good and one of the son you see the three sons become three continent so one of the son became africa continent huh? now what was uh, the blessing which god gave to uh, africans let us read genesis 925 brother genesis 925 brother huh? And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall, be, shall he be unto his brethren. Mm, servant of servants, that means this is servant class. Now you tell me, which is the class among the balanced three? See, lack and photo is finished. So we got three more classes. That is the great multitude, the ancient worthies and the world. Among these three people, three groups, who will be the group of people who will be like servants? She lack and are like kings, right now. They shall be ruling with Christ for a thousand years. But who will be the servant class among these three? Is it the world? Or is it the great multitude? Or is it the ancient worthies who will be the servant class? Any guess? Great multitudes? Very good. A great multitude will be the servant class. He says in the Bible, in Revelation, you see, seventh chapter. What does it say? In Revelation it says, I behold a great multitude. Revelation 7 9. You see, they were standing before the throne, holding what? Holding the palms in their hands and putting white robes. You see, so what does this signify? This signifies they are the servant class of people. Why? Why they are servant class of people? Because they did not serve the Lord now. They did not completely dedicate themselves to the Lord. 100% from their heart. So they will be of the, you see, what class? The servant class. Even in Psalms 45, 14, it says, no, huh? the king and the queen. But there is also our virgin's uh, companion. See, usually when we get married, now what happens? Uh, there's a the best boy and the best girl who comes now. Huh? So the bride is the church. The bridegroom is Jesus. Now who is the best uh, girl there? These are the great multitude who lost the opportunity to be queens of this earth. Isn't it? So... We all have consecrated, we all have dedicated our life to the Lord. Why? Huh? Because we want to be of the like and 44,000. Correct or not? Correct, brother. Correct. You see, we want to be of the divine nature. We never want to lose the crown. But because of our unfaithfulness, if you lose the crown, you will be of the great multitude class. Now, what will happen to the great multitude? He says, they shall be put into great tribulation. Why? Read, brother. Genesis, uh, sorry, uh, Revelation 7, 14, brother. Revelation 7, 14. Oh, brother, you're there. Can you read? Is it possible? Revelation 7, 14, brother. Okay. Uh, you're there, brother? Oh, brother? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, Revelation 7 14, brother. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to the said to me, This fair day which came out of 
great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Mm, they have made it clean in the blood of the Lamb. Why? Why will the tribulation uh, make them clean? You see? Because when they are put into a lot of trouble in their life, that is the time they will start appreciating Jesus Christ. They will come close to the Lord. Uh, and that is the time they will have more faith. Uh, and in that faith, what will happen? All their robes will be washed means what? Uh, that means the robe has gone dirty. Jesus has given us a robe of righteousness which we need to maintain neat and clean when we are in the world. Whenever we, we commit uh, one sin in the world, a mark comes on this robe. We need to immediately apologize in the prayer, request for the Lord for forgiveness of sins in the prayer and wash it. If we don't wash it, what will happen? That mark stays on the robe. So it has to be cleaned only by putting it into trouble. When trouble comes, that is the time that they come, draw near to the Lord. Before that one, they just like, you see, uh, namesake uh, people who just uh, go to the churches like that one, see? But uh, the real people who want to live for the Lord, you see, they are the lack and whatever. So these people who tend to come to the Lord, but because of a lot of trouble, they draw back. So as they draw back, God is going to put them into a lot of trouble. Therefore, you see, Jesus said, no, remember Lord's wife in Luke 17, 32. You see, why did Jesus say to remember Lord's wife? We should not be like Lord's wife. So once we have decided to leave sin and what God doesn't like, we should never turn back and see that one. That was the fault with, you see, Lord's wife. Lord, his two daughters and wife also came out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sinful city. There's only sin, sin, sin there. Lot was vexed. He knew that this is a very, this is sinful uh, place and it's not place uh, that uh, God's children should live. So he went out. After he came out, God destroyed this Sodom and Gomorrah. But while uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was getting destroyed, what happened? Uh, this uh, Lot's wife turned back. So, we should never turn back, uh, you see, after deciding to follow the Lord. Uh, you know, what did Jesus say? Huh? Uh, Jesus said, no, in uh, Luke, Luke, read brother, Luke, uh, 17, brother. Luke, uh, one minute. Look, uh, Jesus said, no, he that put us is uh, Jenny, Luke 9, 62, brother. Correct. Luke 9, 62, brother. Go for brother. Can you read? You have the Bible? Yes, brother. Okay, Luke 9, 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plough, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. If you have decided to follow the Lord, never try to look back. So one who looks back is not the person who is fit for being the follower of Jesus Christ. So forget about going heaven. So this is... The two parts of the heavenly salvation. There was a third river that came out of uh, Eden. Now, what is the name of the third river? Genesis 2.14. Mm. Very good. Edekel. And it says, it went to the land of Assyria. No. What is the meaning of Assyria in the Bible? No. Who came out of Assyria? If you see, actually, Babylon is in Assyria. You know? Who came out of uh, Assyria? In the Bible, our forefather, Abraham, came out of, uh, you see, Assyria. Uh, let us read, you see, Acts 7, 2, brother. Acts 7, chapter 2, verse, brother. Mm. And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, the, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham, where he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charan. 
Charan, you see? Eh? See, Mesopotamia. You know, where is Mesopotamia? If you see in the chart, uh, see, I'll show you. Uh, this is Mesopotamia. You know, what is Mesopotamia? Meaning? Uh, you see? Mesopotamia. Uh, uh, Meso means two. Potamia means water. Uh, therefore, you see hippopotamus, uh, potam, potomo, potamus. Uh, that means water. Uh, animal living in water. Uh. So, Potamia means water. Miso means two. That means the land between two rivers. You know, which is the one? The land between Euphrates and Tigris River. The Tigris River is in Syria. And Abraham came from that place. Now what does this, this signify? This signifies, uh, you see, the faithful warriors of the Old Testament. Now who are the faithful warriors of the Old Testament? Old Testament, who were faithful to God? Ancient worthies. Very good. We call them as the uh, ancient worthies. So that's what Hebrews 11 chapter says. So this represents the people who come for the earthly salvation. And what did Jesus say? You see, this class represents the people from Abel to John the Baptist. Now, did they go to heaven? No. Period. Just now, they did not receive. They were never went to heaven. Okay. And what, what is the reward uh, that God is going to give them? Read Hebrews 11, chapter 39 and 40, brother. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. No, the day without us should not be made perfect. Uh -huh. You see, it clearly says, they without us should not be made perfect. Perfect. They, God having promised something better for us. You see? Huh? They, they, you see, obtained a good report. But did not receive the promise. But God has promised something better for us means what? They are a little bit uh, promised, a little bit lower. You see? The price than the church. So what is that one? The church is going to the heavenly salvation. They will come to the earthly salvation. But in the earthly salvation, what type of resurrection they are going to come? If you see, they are going to come in the better resurrection. Read with the same chapter, 35th verse. Same chapter, 35 brother. Uh. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. That they might obtain a better resurrection. Better. What is the meaning of better? That means this is not uh, like the similar world resurrection. This is better than the world resurrection. That means they are going to come resurrected as a perfect human beings. The world will come as they died. The age will run backwards. But for the ancient worthies, as they were already proved faithfulness, they will come resurrected as they were at the age of 30 years. You see? And what is going to do in the thousand years? Sir? They are going to be princes in all the earth. Psalms 45, 16. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou makest princes in all the earth, in all the fields, agriculture, you see, Food, uh, transport, uh, finance, uh, you see, forest, all the departments uh, shall be handled by the ancient worthies. Just imagine if there is uh, Joseph in the food department, will there be any corruption? Will he give any rotten rice or any spoiled rice or a very cheap quality rice to the poor? No, Joseph did not do that one when he was in Egypt. Equally, you see, saw everybody. So, Equally, that uh, blessings will flow to your There won't be any cheating or corruption in the thousand years because these shall be ministers in the thousand years. So this is how God is going to establish his kingdom on this earth. They shall be really visible rulers on this earth. You see, Christ and the church will be invisible rulers, but uh, they are going to rule through this ancient world on this earth. They are going to you see, handle the administration in the world. Now, let us read the last river. The last river is called as what, brother? Euphrates. Very good, Euphrates. So, this is the fourth river. Now, you tell me, which is the last class that is left over? We have studied lack and 44,000. We studied great multitude. We studied ancient Vadis. The balance is which one? 
world. Very good. So this represents the worldly salvation. Therefore, Euphrates in the Bible means the general world. Uh, they also come to what salvation? Uh, earthly salvation itself. Uh, uh, when Jesus is going to come, what will happen now? Uh, all the people are going to be resurrected back on this earth. Everybody think that uh, as soon as a man dies, he goes to hell and heaven and all. You see, judgment will happen immediately if they commit sin, they'll go to hell. They'll be tortured uh, and uh, they shall be put into hell fire. And uh, if we do good things, uh, we'll go to heaven. Bible doesn't say so. You see, no, some scriptures which are falsely interpreted gives us that meaning. No, but Bible actually doesn't say so. The Bible says that all in the grave, everybody is sleeping nicely in the grave. They will all come back in the resurrection when Christ comes. So read, brother. 1 Corinthians 15, 21, 22. Home, brother, can you read? 1 Corinthians 15, 21 and 22, brother. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Or as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made life. Uh -huh. See? Or by man came death, man came also the resurrection. In Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. As everybody are dying in Adam, similarly in Christ, everybody will and definitely come back alive to this earth. Then what will they do? They will come back as they died. But as they keep on showing obedience to the word of God, they will walk up the highway of holiness and come to the perfection of uh, Adam. This will take a thousand years. You see, to bring back man from fallen condition to perfect Eden condition. Adam condition. To be like Jesus. How, how much years will it take? It will be a thousand years. In thousand years, what will happen? The age will run in the reverse order. Job 33.25, it says, now see this video. Clearly observe this video. The old lady is becoming a young lady. This will literally happen in God's kingdom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. Everybody shall return to the days of his youth. Imagine what motivation. You see, what enthusiasm people will have. They will all run, 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 run. Today, everybody is running to a beauty parlor shop. Why? They don't want to get old. But in thousand years, everybody will run to Christ. They will run and come to Christ. He is the beautician. He will uh, give beauty. He can do one condition. Obey the word of God. Surrender to God. Obey His commandments. Follow the Bible. That's what he'll say. Nothing else. He won't ask any money. Nothing. No. It's an only simple condition. Obey. So obey the word of God. That's sufficient. So this is going to happen in the thousand years. Now, huh? at Jesus' second advent, whom will, he, whom will Jesus buy a bound? Satan. Very good. For how many years? For thousand years. Why? Why is left now? Why is going to bound thousand years uh, Satan then? Why is not bound now? What is the reason for him to bind Satan thousand years then? What is the reason? To open up the eyes. Ah, of the people. Very good. To open the eyes of the people. They are all blinded. Revelation chapter 21 to 3 says, you see, so he may not deceive the nations so he may deceive the nations no more. For that reason, Satan will be born for a thousand years. Eyes will be opened. Ears will be opened. What eyes? Not literal eyes. Not literal ears. Eyes of understanding will be opened. Ears of understanding will be opened. Everybody will come to knowledge of truth. Imagine. Hmm? If evil influence is not there, definitely the people will come to truth. It will not only be the conversion of mankind, but the conversion of the entire animal kingdom also. Yeah? What will the animal eat in the kingdom? Is it vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Vegetarian. Oh, is it? Oh, home brother, what do you say? What do you say? 
in the thousand years animals will eat vegetarian or non vegetarian brother home brother eh huh? they will eat uh, pure vegetarian even the lion the cheetah you see the wolf everything will have to eat only you see vegetarian no meat no blood no pain no killing in the thousand years they have done this is the prayer which jesus taught us to pray can anybody tell the lord's prayer what did jesus taught us to pray a father ha huh? tell tell the lord's prayer ha huh? gobal brother tell the lord's prayer matthew 6:10 my kingdom come they will be done in earth as it is in heaven ah uh, father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven now how god's uh, will is done in heaven is there sin sorrow sickness in heaven no no is there anybody who is speaking against god in heaven no no are everybody obedient to god in heaven yes yes similarly it will be in our that is his purpose of establishing his kingdom on earth thy kingdom come god's will be done on earth therefore if you see dear brother what is happening there four rivers are given correct now first two second two huh? what is the name of first two pishon and gihon second two hidikil and huh? euphrates now what does this two represents two first two represents heaven salvation the second two represents the earthly salvation you know this is beautifully shown today in the world today in the world map if you see euphrates river is still there and hidikil huh, river is also there that is called as uh, you see tigris uh, river huh, you know but which two rivers are not there huh? pishon and gihon are not there you know, what does this clearly represents uh? this clearly represents heavenly salvation is invisible nobody can see the heavenly salvation but uh, euphrates tigris you can see that is the earthly salvation the visible kingdom got it brother clear ha huh? huh? got it now so yes. yes this is the secret that god has mentioned in the book of genesis you see a small point a river came out of eden parted into four points four parts huh? god's beautiful plan is there this is how we study the bible not read the bible not just carry the bible to the churches study therefore this is very important after once we study only we can walk as per it you see then only we'll get the faith see this brings us near to the lord okay the lord bless his words